born to Elfie and Marvin, respectively a German figurative artist whose work you see before you, and a Jewish quantum physicist, reality has always been more fascinating and surprising than fiction could ever be. But on July 16th, 2004, the world lost one of its great treasures, and I lost my mother. Elfie Chester's war with breast cancer came to an end. Several years later, I finally convinced my dad to move to Santa Cruz. In recent months, my father and I have started a tradition of weekly lunches where we talk about everything from quantum computing to economics to his conclusive solution to the debate over free will. Yeah, you heard me right. He solved it, that age-old dilemma. And after a lifetime spent inspecting the impalpable nature of the quantum microcosm, he decided to take on one of our most profound philosophical conundrums. Spoiler alert, there is no free will. There was a time not long ago when the entire field of psychology didn't exist at all. But as causes were identified for behavioral anomalies, it became irresponsible to personally blame people for their actions without considering their conditions. After all, psychopaths are people too. And as my dad puts it, free will is behavior without evident coercion. That is, the illusion of being able to make a decision depends on us not being able to see those mechanisms that guide the decision process. The more you know, the less you believe. So, what does it even mean to make up your mind? We all know there are no homunculi in our heads, and yet it feels like we're pulling little levers looking out of a portal from within our windows of our eyes. Can it be that our autopilots are just that good? A 2008 study titled Unconscious Determinants of Free Decisions in the Human Brain showed that we unconsciously prepare for and even conclude decisions up to 10 seconds in advance of actually consciously deciding. So your homework is make an uninfluenced conscious decision. In other words, we're really good at fooling ourselves into believing that we're making decisions, when in fact we're merely witnessing the results of our evolution, our environment, and our chemical compositions. We are passengers witnessing our very own journeys. So, the more we learn about what guides our decisions, the more evident our coercion. The more we learn about genetics, physiology, neuroscience, biology, the more we understand what compels people. Free will is a coping mechanism for our lack of omniscience. Sipping a delicious Sofia mocha with my, at chocolat with my pop on a Wednesday afternoon. Self-discipline is an illusion. It's a gift to those who feel sufficiently well that their brains create greater rewards for investing than for spending. But if you are chronically suffering, your brain will offer you no such gift. If you're overwhelmed with grief, pain, hunger, or anger, you become a prisoner to your own anguish. You can't just will that away. So my dad makes a point of carrying lots of dollar bills around town so that he may give some to anyone who asks. Because to accept determinism is to accept that suffering is purely an injustice of the fates and joy is granted by chance. This requires a mighty big heart. But we are machines. Recent studies show us that parole judges have been shown to judge based on how hungry they are. People eat more chocolate cake when they have to hold large numbers in their heads. And willpower is expendable. Every time you use it, you lose it. Human perception is complex. Several months of our luncheons have been dominated by a remarkable book called Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman, an expert in heuristics and judgment, as well as the only psychologist to ever win a Nobel Prize in economics. 
Kahneman operates on the premise that there are two fundamental aspects to how we process information and make decisions. We spend most of our time unconsciously thinking fast, handling things like driving, reading facial expressions, processing sound, and making gut decisions. That's obviously not free will. The part we all have a hard time with is the slow thinking. The thinking that feels conscious and focused and intentional. However, he cites tons of examples of how even our slow thinking is severely flawed. How even if you quiet all the outside influences, ultimately, we suck at basic logic. We are the product of millions of years of evolution and have the tools to cope with the world around us. Along with our sense of sight, smell, touch, taste, and sound, we have a sense of control. It enables us to function with great intelligence in a world where we just can't know everything. But fear not. If you believe in making the world a better place, you are not helpless. You are endowed with a gift. You are a vessel of blessings. Whether or not you actually have any control is totally irrelevant. You will always feel like you are choosing to help. It's in your nature. You are who you are. If you change, it's because you are driven to change. There's nothing to be done except to keep on doing. So try not to let the destination distract you from enjoying the ride.